you on this feast of St. Andrew. Um, that there is a, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but there's a Christmas novena that starts today and ends on um, December 24. And it's very, uh, it's a very powerful prayer. You pray it 15 times a day. It's very short. But it just says, Hail and bless be the hour and the moment in which the Son of God was born of the most pure Virgin Mary at midnight in Bethlehem, in the piercing cold. In that hour, vouchsafe, I beseech thee, O my God, to hear my prayer and grant my desires. Then you mention your, your request. Through the merits of our Savior Jesus Christ and of his blessed mother, amen. It's a very short prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Um, a friend of mine, Father Joseph Wolf on EWTN, you, you've probably seen him, right? Uh, Father Joseph, he, um, he had an uncle who was blind. And this happened several years ago. His uncle prayed his prayer every day, 15 times a day. And on Christmas Eve, he could see again. So it just, it's a very powerful prayer. And you pray it from the heart. But the great thing about it is if you can pray it, you know, maybe five times in the morning, five times at lunch, five times in, in the evening, or you can pray it 15 times straight if you want. But the great thing about it is it puts you in the, the mode of the coming of Christ. And that's what this is all about, Advent, the Advent season. What's the very first thing that you see when you come in here? Well, of course, the very first thing you see, of course, is the Blessed Sacrament and everything. But as far as Advent goes, everybody sees the Advent wreath, right? The Advent wreath. And how you see that sign of hope on there? That's what they're for a reason. Because Advent season is a season of hope. A season of hope and expectation, anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. And so many of us, I don't know about you, but Many times we lose that sense of longing, of really longing. You know, you know how sometimes you'll see a little child and they're longing for that piece of candy, or they're longing for this toy, you know, or something like that. But are we longing for Christ? Are we longing for the birth of Jesus? Or is this just any other season to us? This is Advent. This is a time, it's like a little lint, they call it, like a little lint. And it's a time of anticipation and just, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, I can't wait for you to come, Lord. I can't wait for you to come. And so that's what was, was stirring in my heart this morning was this longing and this hope and this desire. And she'll share what's stirring in her heart as well. <laughs> well, as we're... Testing, testing, testing. Uh oh. Let's Maybe see. the battery went dead. You can use this one. Oh, that's working. You can use testing. This one. one, two, three. Testing. Mm -hmm. testing. It does that sometimes. Right? Okay. You can use this one. Okay. Sorry about that technical difficulties. <laughs> so, you know, as she's speaking of this. Advent and preparing for Christmas because the incarnation of Christ is such a profound mystery. It is so powerful. And even the scriptures say, how do you know who the Antichrist is, right? The one who says, what is it? That Jesus that did not come did not in the come flesh. Yeah. And you know, of course, right now, we're in a time of being with Mary as she for nine months has been and is continuing to carry the Christ child, God who has become incarnate within her womb. And so this is a time of really uniting with Mary. If we even just take a moment right now to open ourselves to the presence of Mary. And of course, Mary is always with us, especially as we call upon her. She's here with us right now in spirit as we exercise our spiritual senses, but even during this Advent time, as we 
open ourselves to be one with Mary and her disposition during the time while Christ is within her womb. I often just reflect on that and just open myself to Christ within me through baptism, spiritually present. And this is what this Advent, this many Lent, is about us renewing ourselves in this, the graces of baptism, renewing ourselves and being still. It's kind of like a mini desert time. What does it mean by like Lent? Is a time of going into the desert in the sense of putting aside all those things that might distract us from going to our deeper heart, to, from entering into the interior life of communion with God. Some of you have heard me say before how, you know, I grew up Catholic, but always seeking something in life. I wasn't even practicing the Catholic faith when I went to LSU into the party school, then went to Hollywood into being a mo wanting to be a movie director, working amidst the movie industry, but always seeking something more and purpose. But it's when Mary helped me to realize that the Trinity dwell within me through baptism. And the Holy Trinity is there longing for this communion. And I was so cut off from it because I was so caught up in the externals. And so this is what this time of Advent is, you know, for each one of us. Where are our hearts right now? And what, where are our hearts? What is at the center of our hearts? I don't know if you've seen that, um, that diagram that's been shared at times of a circle and where is Christ in our lives? Where we can, what is in the center of our lives? If we all even open our hearts right now, what is it really at the center? Am I in the center? Am I enthroned in the center? Is someone else enthroned? Is my work in, at the center? What do we find at the center? Or is Christ at the center? And if Christ is at the center, then everything else in our lives should be revolve around that center where Christ is enthroned, our work, our family, our, our every relationship, everything about us, our spiritual life. And so this is a time in Advent to really renew ourselves in who is at the center. Are we really allowing Christ to be enthroned at the center? And, and you know, so... I'm um, going back to that point that I was going to make. Um, it is so, the incarnation of Christ, that's why the Angelus is such a powerful prayer that we shared before Mass, because it's entering into the incarnation of Christ. Hail the moment and hour, as she said, but it's the same, that same type of prayer. And we were praying with someone, you know, a little while back. And this person was like really being attacked by the evil one. And this person could not even say a prayer because they were so being so attacked because they had come from healing prayer. And, and they were balled up like this and just couldn't even do anything and just saying, what is going on? Couldn't even figure it out, but it was being so attacked. So Mary Claire and I, we started just praying. We had some blessed salt that we kind of sprayed around there. And we were praying, we were singing the Ave Maria, the Hail Mary in Latin. And, and at one point, Sister Mary Claire actually started to put, put her hand on her, the head of this person. And what did you say? Very vague how you fought to pass, or it means um, and the word is very fresh. And, and she just kept saying that over and over and over. And I started sharing and saying that with her. And this continued, because everything we were sharing with the Hail Mary and this, it's like this person got to a point where they were able to say a prayer with us. You know, but it just took that time. And this is the power of the incarnation of Christ. And, and so for us in this Advent time, is a time of preparing, being still in our hearts and saying, okay, let us open ourselves so that when, as Christ is knocking, that we're not as the innkeeper saying, you know, there's too much going on in my life. There's too much. I don't have room 
Rather, let's say, wow, I have a lot of room at the end of my heart to receive you this Christmas. You truly are going to be the center of my life this Christmas, not my family, not presents I need to buy, not presents I'm going to receive, but you, Jesus. You, are, you have been born, the incarnation of Christ, and, and I'm renewing myself in that. And I would just like to share, when I said the um, very big day in Christ, um, just to give you a little background about the priest uh, from Canada, that was a very powerful prayer for him any time that uh, anybody was being bothered by the evil one, because he can't stand it. And the word was made flesh. When you say it in Latin, verbum de canofactumes, he flees. Because you see how powerful that is that God himself, as you were saying, the Trinity, came down as a little child in the flesh. How powerful is that? How humbling that is that he became a little child in the flesh. Satan trembles. So this is such a powerful, powerful season of Lent and anticipation for the coming of the Word made flesh. And not only is Jesus come in the flesh, but he's come in the flesh to be our Savior. And there's such a, a rampant New Age spirit about, you know, in our times today, where people will acknowledge Jesus. They may even say some scriptures here and there, but they don't need a Savior. We need a Savior. It's like they're their own Savior. And it's like just such a compromised spirit, even among Catholics and Christians at times. We, have, we both have relatives who are, you know, caught up in that spirit, that new age kind of mentality of, no, I think Jesus was great, and he suffered and everything, but it's not about, I need Jesus. I need him as my Savior every moment of every day. And so this, again, is a preparing for this Advent season for this um, receiving him. So we thought that we would enter in to a couple of mysteries of the rosary. We, We've been sharing different mysteries of the rosary like this. We already did the joyful, we did the sorrowful, we did the luminous, and we would have done the glorious, but we couldn't get ourselves to do it because it's the Advent season. And we just want to enter into two of the mysteries, of the joyful mysteries. They're kind of like Advent mysteries. And just see where the Holy Spirit leads us, you know, as we enter in together. There is one thing that I that came to my mind when she had the candles up, the um, the advent wreath. As many of you know, so you see that they have the purple candles and the pink candle. And so it is like a little a little lint. You see, purple is representative of action. And the pink candle is a sign of hope. You see, they have hope in there that Jesus is, is coming. He's almost here. So it's like we like the we like that at that, at that brief. Even in our homes, people do this. And it's a great reminder for us of the coming of our Savior each week that goes by. The light of the world gets brighter and brighter. You have one lit, two lit, three lit, four. It's brighter and brighter, and the light becomes brighter. And so that's a good um, outward sign for us. We need, we need these, these signs to remind us. Yeah. The Annunciation. Do you, do you want to start it or just, we're just going to go to the Annunciation? We can't do it. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. How long do you want to do it? All right. We'll start, um, we'll start with the, uh, the beginning of uh, the Rosary um, with the Apostles' Creed, and then we'll be into the Annunciation. And for those, those who, ha has everyone been here with us before and praying the Rosary? Everyone. So you know, some a couple have I'm just going to remind us, because it's such a powerful um, truth for us to remember as we enter into the rosary, and what we're going to do right now, St. Ignatius of Loyola speaks of three ways of entering into Scripture. The first is just reading it. The second is 
reading it and imagining it happening like a play before you, and the third is actually entering into the scene and becoming one of the characters to encounter uh, Jesus and Mary, to open ourselves to the grace of the mystery. And, and another key to praying the rosary is to come as we are, to come not, not with our holy mask on, not with our mask of feeling like we need to have it all together, but to come in abandon, in a surrendered stance, of a childlike stance of saying, Lord, here I am. And this is what's going on in my heart right now. This is what I'm struggling with right now. This is very hard. This is what gives us the grace to, to enter into the mystery and receive the graces of the mysteries. And um, just like the hemorrhaging woman, you know, like you've, probably, you've heard that many times, probably the scripture of the hemorrhaging woman, but I love to share it because here Jesus was so crowded. There was crowds around him. And the apostles were, everyone was rubbing up against him. And this woman who had hemorrhages, who had difficulties in her life, she said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And so she comes raw. She comes with needs from God and longing from God for healing and grace. And she comes up and touches the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops and, and he says, who touched me? And of course the apostles are saying, what do you mean? It might have even been, been Andrew who speaks this today. He said, what do you mean? Who touched you? Everyone is rubbing up against you. And he, and he said again, who touched me? because his, he felt his healing power flowing from him. And the woman comes forth. And so that's what we're called to be in that disposition as we enter into these, to these mysteries, opening ourselves. What are our hemorrhages right now? We're, we're gonna take a moment to just be attentive to our deeper hearts and be aware of this. I'll take a moment right now And Lord, as we come before you, as we enter into this mystery, we're going to actually do the beginning part of the um, rosary. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For the intentions of Pope Francis, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For an increase of faith, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For an increase of hope, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For an increase of divine love, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of heaven. Lead all souls to heaven, 
especially those in the Holy The first um, mystery is the Annunciation. And what do we think of as we, we see the angel coming before our lady? Be not afraid. You have found favor with God. What was Mary afraid of? She must have been afraid for him to say, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Mary is, is like us, right? I mean, there's many times that we're afraid of different things that God may ask of us, of different things that God desires us to do. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And, and at this point, I think what was just coming into my heart now is that the anticipation. Here's Advent, right here. This is Advent, right here. And Mary is anticipating, how can this be since I don't know man? How can this be? And he's saying that the power of the Most High is going to come over. And you're going to be overshadowed. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to name the child within your womb, Jesus. He's going to be the Messiah. Mary was totally humbled by this fact. And here's the, the thing. You can imagine the silence in the whole world as they were waiting. Every angel, every person in the, in the kingdom of heaven was waiting for Mary to say yes. All those who were in the know were waiting for Mary to say yes. To give her fiat. And Mary says, yes, be it done to me according to your word. And what comes to me too is our yes. Do we give God our yes in the present moment? Whatever it is that he's asking of us, and however difficult it may, may be, do we say that yes? Because all of heaven is waiting for your yes, and they're anticipating it as well, and all waits in silence for your yes, because that's how important your yes is. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And as we're in this mystery, and really just uh, encountering Mary, if we imagine ourselves in that room where Mary is and where the angel's appearing, what stirs in our heart as we open ourselves to enter into this mystery? At different times in my life, different things stir. Very often, I find myself just in awe of Mary's disposition. 
her whole being is so disposed, and in fact, her whole being has been disposed since she was uh, uh, conceived in the womb of Saint Anne, because she was immaculately conceived. Mary's whole being, throughout every moment of her life, was disposed to God and His will, and this is why she's at this point where she is being asked to be the mother of God. And every fiber of her being is responding with a yes. She has nothing else distracting her. The, the, there's all room at the end in Mary's heart. Her heart is immaculate. And every single room in her heart is so open and receptive to God every single moment of her life. And, and this is a great grace that Mary gives, that we receive through Mary, especially as we're consecrated to her. And I even ask right now, how many hands? Who is who is consecrated to Mary? Okay. And those that aren't and want to know more, talk to us after. But there's such a great grace with this consecration, but it's a daily living of this grace. And you may have heard me share before, but it's worth saying again. I, I remind myself all the time, our hearts are like houses with many rooms, and we may invite Jesus knocks, we may invite him into the living room, we may invite him into different rooms in our hearts and our lives, but, and then we say, okay, I have to do this, Jesus, just stay put. Okay? And, but he wants to be every single moment of our lives, he wants to be with us in it. And this is the grace of Mary. Wherever she went, whatever she did, she was in the stance of fiat. You see, because God's grace is coming out, pouring out upon us right now. And at every single moment of our lives, in the present moment. And so this is uh, the grace for us to dispose ourselves in the present moment. And often for me, when I realize that I'm in a room that Jesus isn't in, is when I'm feeling anxious or um, different different insecurities stir or different things. I'm always hearing Jesus knocking. He's saying, and if, and if I'm still enough and quiet, then I can open the door. I can hear him knocking and I can invite him in. And so this is the grace of what Mary draws us into. So in this present moment, what room do we find ourselves in? If we are attentive to what we're experiencing, what we're feeling. Our emotions are all, often a sign, you know, a, a help to us in inviting God in to deeper areas in our hearts and our lives. So as we continue in this mystery, let us, Mary, we ask you to help us to open our hearts more, every room in our hearts. What rooms do we find right now that we're in need of inviting God into? And help us, Mother, to say yes to God in the present, in the situations in which we find ourselves. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And in this new image that you see, Mary has received Jesus into her. And she's such a perfect model for us of entering more deeply into the interior life of union with God. We all have been baptized. When we're baptized, we receive the indwelling presence of the Trinity. Or we communing with the Trinity within us. And so Mary did this so perfectly throughout every moment of her life. 
She was in union with God. And you know, St. Teresa of Avila speaks of the seven mansions that we go through to gradually, and the seventh mansion is uh, transforming union. It's, it's when we're constantly in this union with God, and this is, of course, where Mary was, always there. But it goes through different stages for each of us in our lives, and it's not for us to get caught up in what stage we're in, but it's just to recognize that there's always more. There's always more to going deeper and entering into more constant union with God. So as we continue this mystery, let us open ourselves to Mary and her, um, the graces that flow through her intercession. You know, she's here with us right now. And she brings us this grace of growing in the interior life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Our Mother of the Eucharist, pray for us. Ave, Ave, Ave. This is a true story. This woman, uh, she was married.